Hello folks and welcome back to Let's Play Mobile Suit Gundam Encounters in Space. We are on to the final Ace Pilot campaign and we get to play as Seema Garha. Garha, ha, I don't believe it's ha, whatever her name is. Anyways, we get to play as this uh, kind of messed up in the head lady. She's a nice lady. Anyways, it's been a little while since I got the last episode up and I've been having a little, couple of troubles with uh, my recording software. This is actually my third time recording this particular Ace Pilot uh, campaign just because for some reason my capture device, whenever it would get to a load sequence between missions, would just stop recording and wouldn't start back up. I don't know why. I don't use it to jump cut at all, but it just seems to be doing it on its own accord. Anyways, let's get the show on the road. Universal Century 0079, January 3rd. The Principality of Zeon declares war on the Earth Federation. Simultaneously, Zeon mobile forces are dispatched to Side 1, Side 2, and Side 4. Through the use of inhuman NBC weapons, the three colonies are quickly destroyed. Sima Garahau is a young soldier of one of the task forces ordered to carry out this dirty job. Yep. We get to play as a rookie SEMA here, going in to gas a colony. For those who have actually seen part of the beginning for MS-8 team, you'll actually you, you see a, a part where Shiro Mata actually sees a, the gassing or the result of one of the gassings of the colonies. And SEMA here is actually one of the people who unwillingly perpetrated that type of attack. It's kind of a vicious thing to use such types of uh, biological warfare methods and... You know, nukes, that type of thing. I mean, war is not an easy, an easy subject to take anyway. It comes whatever form, no matter how much. But I didn't know anything about the poison gas. And to be and to be honest, when I first played this and Federation got through into uh, watching 0083 again, I understood Seema's character a little bit better, I think, or at least I, I saw her in a different light. Because in 0083, if you just watch the standalone OVA, it just seems like she's... She just seems to be kind of like that jaded type of character who just is out to, you know, do whatever she can to make a profit or to come out on top here. But I can see how she got that way, having played this mission, seen some of the uh, side material uh, that is a sort of companion to 0083. I mean, she's kind of started out as a cool type of soldier and then just was driven down, well, the path that she ends up in 0083. I mean, how would you feel if you just figured out that uh, your, your superiors used you to basically commit a massive war crime genocide, essentially on a massive scale? Zeon devil, you people are inhuman! But they do mention in the opening credits to uh, Mobile Suit Gundam that a good chunk of the human population is absolutely destroyed. I think it's nearly half during the first couple of uh, weeks of war. And this is one of the reasons why. Not only did they drop colonies and such on top of uh, the, the planet, which killed people and did all sorts of other things, like took out uh, Sydney, Australia completely. I think it was Sydney. But uh, it just wasn't a good time for that. A lot of Mobile Suit Gundam is a good comparison and kind of contrast and draws a lot from the uh, some of the events that happened during World War II for it. Uh, and a lot of people have made that similarity. And I, yeah, I can see that it's based on it, uh, on heavy elements from it, but I think it does try and do something different and tries to show you something that no matter what the reasons for the war, people are going to die. And there's some people who have really no want or care or even concern about it. That's a sad fact about everything for it. Anyways, in this mission, I haven't even begun talking about the mission. We're piloting just a normal Zaku-2 with a Zaku-2 machine gun. I kind of wish it did have the bazooka because the machine gun just doesn't have a, enough kick to it. But this mission is extremely easy. If you have trouble fighting some of these saberfish and such, then I, it's going to get a lot worse from here on out. But uh, you only have saberfish and some Salamis attack units to worry about. These nightmares never end. It's been four years on the Lily Marlene. Four years of bad dreams. Well, so be it. 
After all, we're the notorious SEMA fleet. Too late now for second thoughts. And that is the true desire of all space noids. And the Lernia's set. Air bleed set. Engine anti-ice set. <laughs> All right, I'm ready, Marin Alica. Good hunting, Commander Sima. Of course. <clears throat> I really do like that scene for the sole fact that it shows you the, the takeoff procedures out of a Zanzibar 2. You don't really see that very often. Anyways, Universal to the next mission we go. Century 0083, November. Four years since the end of the One Year War. In the vicinity of Solomon, Zeon remnants have gathered together with the Delaz fleet to put Operation Stardust in motion. Even though her marines have joined the Delaz fleet, Sima Garahau has no interest in seeing Zeon restored. Instead, she intends to sell the internal information she's been gathering to the Earth Federation for her own personal gain. The deal is almost sealed as Seema's forces close in on the Federation ship. But things don't always go as planned. I mean, can you honestly blame Seema for wanting to see the zombies just lie dead as it is? But uh, this is actually an interesting little mission because... If you think about it, had the Alvian not interfered at all, the Birmingham may have actually gotten a hold of all of Star Operation Stardust's plans, written down to a T for uh, battle deployments and everything else, units, supply routes, all of that. And this entire thing could have been absolutely avoided, and South Burning would still be alive, just uh, as another little side thing, a little bonus, had the Albion just not interfered and allowed SEMA to actually get this deal done. It's them again. At least that's my personal now. belief. Now for this mission, we get a whole new unit. We get a Gelgoog Marine SEMA Custom. We've already fought against this as Kouraki. It can be a pain in the ass to fight against, and it's a decent little suit to actually use. It's armed with a beam spray machine gun. I think it's just a beam machine gun, is what it's called, but because of the scatter shot ability for the actual shots, it can be a little bit annoying to actually score enough hits on one unit without them going wide. Might as well be a shotgun of that type. It's a very similar type to what we used with uh, Shin Matsunaga's uh, beam machine gun as well for his Gelgu Jaeger. Now, for the most part, there's going to be very few in terms of enemy units in this. We're going to be fighting the Gym 2 and the Gym Custom. Now, once you get them down to a certain amount of health, I think it's below 10%, they'll automatically just fuck off. So you're not going to get a whole lot of points out of this. The best thing you can hope to do is actually take out their shields, which will let you see points here and there. Once both of the two, or both of the custom units are actually out of the way, we should be able to concentrate completely on Kuraku, who is piloting the Fulvernian. Now, when we fought him using the uh, the Faisalis, I told you to get in real close because he has us outgunned here. This is kind of reverse. We can do this in one or two ways. We can actually go ahead and attack him at a long range, although the beam machine gun is kind of ineffective in that regard. But we also have kind of a Vulcan arm gun that comes in handy while we're waiting for the machine gun to reload. The beam saber that the Gelgu also packs is nothing to snuff at. But when he comes in close, make sure you try and fuck him over before he can actually score that first hit. It's actually really easy to lock him in that if you're uh, good with timing. However, <laughs> I'm not. Now you do have your time in the upper right corner, so try not to let this battle draw out too long for it. But it really shouldn't, because after you destroy the two other units, you're only going to have to be, you're only going to be able to concentrate on Code Rocky, or you're going to die. As you can see here, he's doing quite a bit of damage to me because I'm not really paying attention too much. And then eventually he'll just go fuck off, and that's it. That's the end of the mission. You're done. I only managed to get out of here with about 2,200 points, but I still have my 35,000 from my no retry. Ah, yes, the Birmingham. I can't believe how stubborn these fools are. They're fixated. I'll admit the Fetty Commander is a pretty good-looking guy. But he's certainly not the luckiest. Hmm. <laughs> Again? The Albion? What a nuisance. There is still a way for me to do business. 
I once heard somebody describe Seema as a conniving snake, and I think there's a little bit of merit to that. However, I still, her character is kind of cool. It's interesting to see this, like I said, this jaded uh, one-year war veteran who is just to absolutely out to just make a buck for himself. Stardust, the colony begins its fateful journey toward Earth. Finally able to show her true colors, Seema switches allegiance and takes Delaz hostage. At last, she spreads the beautiful wings of an ephemeral butterfly. But the situation takes a turn for the worse. I don't know what's with this butterfly Delaz stuff. Commits suicide and Gato destroys the bridge of the Guadan. Seema's scheme has failed, and she's barely able to escape with her life. Man, she actually really did barely avoid getting crushed by the uh, by the arm uh, attack from Gato there. I mean, she just runs her <laughs> runs her ass off trying to get to the back end of the ship and get out of the way. Now, we get to actually pilot a brand new unit here that we've never really used before, and it's the, and I always get this pronunciation wrong, I believe it's always, uh, it's called the Gabara Tetra. This is actually, um, for those who didn't know, there was actually a fourth unit, a fourth Gundam unit that was produced during the GP project. Damn, this, this is, is it. No joke. What do you now, think I know you're doing? it doesn't look like Gundam in the least. That's because it's camouflaged. Seema actually got this unit in a backroom deal with the Federation. As we've seen, she's you know pretty good at those backroom deals for stuff, getting you know things that she needs. Safe, but they couldn't allow her to just go flying Get around with a Gundam, so they camouflaged to look more along the lines of a Xeon mobile suit. Why now, the fourth, the fourth Gundam prototype was actually never really supposed to be used because after the failure of GP1 and GP2, the entire GP project was scrapped, so all the remaining units, whether they were full uh, full functional or not, were put into just mothball, which is where that whole thing at the Levian Rose came into uh, being and where Co tried to steal the GP-03, why there was such a big hu uh, hassle about that, even though the unit could have easily helped turn the tide in a battle. Maybe not stop a colony on its way to Earth, but it could have at least given the Federation a large amount of attack, considering it's meant to defend very large targets. Now, the Tetra is no unit to snuff at. It's extremely fast. Its beam machine gun is extremely potent, and it's accurate as hell. I don't know if it's just a different version or if it just seems to be more accurate. It just hits everything I shoot at it. You're going to have compliments of Zaku 2s and Dom, uh, Dom 2s coming at you for the most part. No, excuse me, regular Doms coming at you in various waves. You can eventually go through all of them, but it doesn't really have to happen. There are two different ways this mission can, can well end for you. One is a good ending, and one is a bad ending, which is canonical. I'm going for the good ending here, and I'm trying to make sure my score is as close enough to an S rank as possible. Now, you're going to be seeing a lot of Ko Raki and the GP-03 flying around. So long as the, um, the Zanzibar 2 that Seema calls home is still kicking, Ko isn't going to really pay attention to you as a unit. He's going to just fly around buzzing that ship until it blows up. However, once it does go up in flames, and you'll notice that by a change in the tempo of music, he will concentrate solely on you. As usual, avoid the hell out of those special attacks he has because they will rip through your armor like nothing. Unless you're going for the bad ending, then that's perfectly fine. Which brings me to the conditions for the good and bad ending. In order to get the bad ending, just let your health fall below, I think, 10% or so against any unit. It doesn't necessarily have to be against the GP-03. For the good ending, we have to kill off uh, the GP-03 without getting down to 10% or so health. Hey which can be kind of a contest. Yeah, However, Ko doesn't have his B or his eye field anymore, which means our B uh, smart gun or machine gun can actually tear into hey him pretty good. The special attack for the Tetra is just an example of using the beam machine gun as well, just more potent shots for it. Hey now. You could actually get away with just using the beam saber in this mission, and you should almost be completely fine. If you're looking for that S rank, though, I'd recommend clearing out as many of these add on units that can show up. Because Code's just going to be way out in the distance and keep circling around you. There, that's the Zanzibar. Once that thing there blows up, Ko will start to coordinate itself on you. Now, that doesn't mean you can't attack Ko as he's going around the ship. It just makes it a little bit difficult because he's flying in you know, circles around you. Despite the fact that he's the size of a tugboat, he manages to be quite agile. Also doesn't help that I sunk a couple of rounds into the side of my own Zanzibar, but uh, who's counting? See, what did I tell you? There it goes. I'm not sure if I killed it or if Ko managed to do it, but now we get to fight Ko on earnest here. Now avoid the little micro-missiles. If you have to get hit by that special attack, 
be hit by the three large missiles it launches from the center. They can actually be blown up using the beam machine gun, so make sure you use that as well. Saber attacks went up close, and you'll manage to take down the GPO-3's armor in no time flat. This actually used to be a really tough mission for me as a kid. I don't know why I had such trouble with it. And that's it. What am I supposed to do next? We've received the good ending, so enjoy. In various backroom deals, it's been decided that Seema's Marine Corps will be assigned to the Titans. Jamatov Hyman's new military branch plans to use her Marines as a special task force. But this changes when Seema realizes that their only purpose is to carry out the dirty work of the Titans. Not surprisingly, she and her Marines disappear without a trace. All right, so we managed to get that S rank. That's actually the good ending, or but it's not ca uh, canonical in the actual storyline for it, because, well, you'll see here, we're going to revert around and actually see what happens here when you get the bad ending for it. But in terms of the good ending, it's interesting to see that Seema would have become part of the founding members of the Titans, not necessarily one of the higher-ups in the Titans, but Finally able to show one of the members the nonetheless. Uh, nonetheless. Allegiance and takes hostage. Blah, 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 we don't need to see this she again. Spreads the beautiful wings of an ephemeral butter. I love the fact that you can skip through a lot of these menus. It would get really tedious to have to listen to that over and over again. Now, with my second recording, I just went straight from this into the next mission for it, but it deleted this portion right here, so I actually had to record this separately. Damn, this if you no do joke. beat Seaman's missions, there's only doing? three of them. Make sure you just go back to Ace Pilot mode. Don't hit New Game. Hit Continue, and you'll take you to that last mission. It's, it's a real big help when you've got like six missions you got to go through, but what? If you do accidentally hit new game on SEMA to get a bad ending or a good ending, You're not so big of a deal because there are 23 missions. But here. just kind of a short go where? Why, you damn! Now, while I did mention that this is technically the camouflage GPO-4, the stats for this unit in game are actually slightly worse than the GPO-4, and you can unlock it if I remember correctly. I think the actual way to unlock it is you have to have at least an A rank in all of white base mode. Basically means you have to unlock uh, TV or TV mode as well, and because you need all A, at least all A ranks in all the white base mode missions. You have to have all A, at least all A ranks in the thoroughbred missions, and all A ranks in the ace pilot mode missions. So that means A. Uh, a or above to all of Shara's missions, the Black Tri-Stars, John Gryden, all that type of thing. Gatos, some of those can be a really big pain in the ass to get done with. But I've, I've actually never piloted the GPO 4 myself. I could never get through some missions as a kid. I'm going to see if I can actually unlock it. I'm hoping I can. But we'll get to that eventually for it. We can actually play it in any of the story mode missions. We actually have to use it either in versus mode or the mission mode which is a sequence I'll be covering next after we end off Ace Pilot here. So for the most part, in this, I, I was trying to get myself killed, so I'm just I'm just using myself, uh, or using myself, giving myself a handicap and just using the beam saber, which I guess you can't really say is a handicap because it just shreds everything in its path. And for the most part, I'm getting quite a few hits on these guys and taking on a lot of units. I'm taking damage like I do wish that the Tetra had a shield of some kind. I think the GPO-4 did have a shield, but I don't know why this doesn't. Maybe they just couldn't figure out a way to camouflage it correctly. Hell, they could have attached a Galgood Marine shield to it and called it a day. Still overall, a very fun unit to use. Like I said, for the most part, Ko's not even going to bother with us. The biggest threat in the beginning of the mission is actually the Zaku's. Oh, there we go. That's an interesting shot to get right at the end. No, don't deploy the guy, Beacon! You want to get killed? It's reading... above! Blammo! And it's out of there! Well, I warned you. Now, this is probably one of the crappiest what? ways to go out. In the Ouch, three right in the midsection, and wait for it. To the destruction of its bridge, Seema soared with the gossamer wings of a mayfly in space.
And now you see her, now you don't. That is probably one. Of, she didn't feel it for long. That was a quick, that was a quick drop with a short stop kind of thing. That was, she was dead instantly. Anyways, got the S rank. We're done with Ace Pilot Mode. When we get back, we're going to start into Mission Mode, and I'll show you what that's all about. Until next time, folks, see you later.